Marty Deuter. And I'm Jennifer Varinas. Welcome to our Ward 1 News Channel. As your first Ward Alderman, we want you to feel safe and connected. Our YouTube videos will take the place of our traditional annual Ward meetings. So what does an Alderman do? Today we're going to give you a fun, easy explanation on City Council 101 and give you a tour on where it all happens. And if there's one big takeaway from these videos, it's come to committee. So we are standing right now in the city council chambers. The council chambers are on the second floor of city hall and all the elected officials sit on this horseshoe shaped dais. The mayor sits in the middle. He's surrounded on either side by the city manager and the city attorney. And then the aldermen sit kind of coming out on each side and we sit by our assigned committees. So the city council is our community's legislative and policy making body. The alderman is what we call the members of city council. So the council's role is to establish the vision, broad goals, and policies of city government. We are not directly involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the city. Instead, we approve the budget, which is our spending plan, determine the tax rate, establish land use and zoning rules, and we approve contracts and city expenses that exceed $20,000. So the city of Elmhurst has no direct authority for the Elmhurst schools or parks. District 205 and the Elmhurst Park District are independent bodies of government with their own elected boards. The city council hires and supervises the city manager. The manager's role is to provide independent professional advice to the council overseeing the details of the council's visions, goals, and policies through the operation of city government. Jim Gabowski is the city manager and he is the administrative head of the government of the city of Elmhurst. Jim's been in the position for about nine years and shortly after taking the job, he relocated his family to Elmhurst, so he's also an Elmhurst resident. You'll often hear us refer to city staff or staff. That includes, but not limited to, department heads such as city manager, assistant city manager, public works, or finance director, or anyone else that works for the city of Elmhurst. It's typical for aldermen to often meet with department heads and staff to maintain open and regular communication. Like any organization, it's essential for us to work together. So what are the responsibilities of the aldermen? So we are elected to represent residents of our board and to make decisions in the interest of those residents and the city as a whole. We are elected on a nonpartisan basis. And I think that's a really important distinction because the issues we work on are nonpartisan issues. We're talking about good government, efficient delivery of services, clean water, public safety. So there are 14 aldermen, two for each of the city's seven wards. Alderman Remus has said that she sometimes gets asked if we have to live in the wards that we're elected to serve, and the answer is yes. So the aldermen are assigned to one of four standing committees and we participate in meetings every Monday evening. So the annual compensation, we do get paid to do this job. It's not a whole lot. In fact, our annual compensation is $2,400. So it's clearly intended to be a part-time responsibility, a part-time job. Uh, the mayor's annual compensation, just for your information, is $8,000, $8,400. So ideally, the wards aldermen work together to respond to constituent concerns. So we have the legislative function, and then we also play a large customer service role. So although we said we're not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the city, the aldermen can often serve as a great liaison to those city services. So if, for example, you've got a pothole that needs to be filled, a light that's out, you can call the city directly. Uh, but if there isn't a quick response, or if you'd prefer to call the alderman, you can call us and we can help to connect you to the, to the right staff people to have that concern addressed. So the aldermen serve in staggered four-year terms. One alderman per ward is elected every two years. So we're outside of um, city council chambers right now, but we're going to take you into the rooms where our committee meetings happen. So follow us. We'll see you in a bit. So we are standing right now in the conference room where the Public Affairs and Safety Committee meets. So this conference room is on the second floor. It is tucked into City Hall. It's actually behind the Finance Committee room 
and the Public Works Committee room. So it's a little more tucked in, but you can always ask if you're trying to find your way here. So the issues that this committee works on include police, fire, city communications, cultural activities, traffic safety improvements, and municipal licensing. So the chair of this committee is Danny Kolumski. I am the vice chair of this committee, and the other member of the committee is Tina Park. So we are outside of conference room number two. Um, it's currently being used, but this is where Public Works and the Building Committee meet. And the issues they deal with are stormwater, streets, sidewalks, forestry, lighting, water, sewers, garbage collections, and acquisitions, dispositions, and maintenance of public buildings. And Jim Kennedy is the chair of this committee, Mike Brennan is the vice chair, and Brian Cahill also sits on this committee. So we are going to walk over to show you which room I manage. So we're outside of room three, and this is where finance, council affairs, and administrative services meet. Um, during COVID, we've actually been meeting in council chambers just so they could spread out a little further. And what we deal with, this is, I'm on this committee, and it's public improvement financing, tax levy, data processing, and policies related to revenues and expenditures, purchasing, and personnel. Um, and the chair of our committee is Noel Toledo, the vice chair is Scott Levin, and then Mike um, Brown is also on the committee with us. And I thought I'd show you this, our 2020 operating budget. We are standing here in the conference room that's used by the development, planning, and zoning committee. So the issues that this committee deals with are economic development, land use planning, and zoning. This conference room is on the first floor of City Hall, um, and it's, it's tucked in if you walk in the main entrance. We are off to the right behind um, some office space. So the chairman of this committee is Michael Hanquist. The other members of the committee are Mark Moliner and Bob Dunn. And the zoning issues that come here to this committee have almost always been considered first by the Zoning and Planning Commission. So the commission conducts public hearings. It's a very formal process. It's largely dictated by state law. So the Zoning and Planning Commission makes their recommendation. That recommendation comes to this committee and then this committee moves forward their recommendation to the full city council. So we wanted to take a few minutes to talk about our legislative process. That process begins with what's called a referral. So a referral initiates the legislative process and is the official introduction of an idea or issue to the city council for review and consideration. Referrals must be originated by at least two aldermen. So for example, Alderman Bremis and I saw a need for enhanced code enforcement and commercial construction site standards. So we drafted and submitted a referral, which is currently being researched by staff and then will be considered by a committee. The referral first appears on a city council agenda when it is introduced and assigned to committee. Very rarely is there any discussion at this point. The committee chair determines when an issue is placed on the committee meeting agenda. More complex issues may take longer to be placed on a committee agenda to give staff more time to prepare background materials. The most extensive discussion on an issue takes place at the committee meetings. Committee discussion and debate often take into consideration input from city staff and the city attorney, best practices from other municipalities, previous decisions, and various expert opinions and background research. Input, input provided at the committee level has the best opportunity to shape the outcome of an issue. Let me say that one more time. Input provided at the committee level has the best opportunity to shape the outcome of an issue. Aldermen regularly provide input on issues outside their committee assignment by having conversations with the committee members considering a particular issue. The committee comes to its conclusion often after discussion at multiple meetings and issues a report, which is the committee's recommendation for action by the full city council. 
The committee report is placed on the next City Council agenda for consideration. The, if the City Council approves the committee report, with or without changes, attorneys then prepare an ordinance or resolution for final approval, which typically takes place at the next City Council meeting. How can you participate as the public? There are multiple ways for you to be informed and engaged. There is an opportunity for public comment at the beginning of every City Council meeting and committee meetings. Comments may be on any topic, not limited to the topics on the agenda. At Council meetings, public comments are limited to three minutes. Public comment at committee meetings tends to be a little bit more informal. You can also submit comments in writing. We cannot underestimate the importance of maintaining open communication. If you have questions or concerns related to agenda items, need information on navigating board docs, would like to know how to submit a public comment or any other city business, please feel free to contact us directly, either by email or phone. This video gives you a brief overview of city council. There's a lot of work that goes into making our city thrive. And the more we can work together, the better it is for our community. One more time, if there's an issue you are interested in, do not wait till the committee report to be considered at city council meeting. Please reach out to your alderman and come to committee.